So hey guys, party. welcome to Real Life Cooking with Chef Lane. We have Lachey here, Shay in the background. I'm just getting all the technological things set um, before we get started. Now we gotta go to Instagram. So if Facebook ever stops working, you can go to Instagram. Facebook is, well they're kind of the same thing. Oh, Instagram, <laughs> sorry Instagram. I have we all turned around. Hey Instagram, welcome to Real Life Cooking. I'm just getting you guys set up here. Uh, we have Lachey McCray here today. Budding comedian, um, self-proclaimed non-cook, yeah. mom, woman, extraordinaire. Right. Now we're now we're all kind of set up here, right? Yes, girl. All right. Oh, your lighting is amazing. Isn't and your it? Phone. No, it's your house. Why is phone is that? No, why is my girl. lighting doesn't look like that? Girl. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Real Life Cooking, um, where the show, the cooking show, where we take we make a meal from start to finish. No TV magic, no TV gimmicks. And today we have Real Life Cook non-cook that she calls herself um, to show you that anyone can do this. I mean, Chris is already on the show, so you guys really know anyone can do this. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're gonna have um, Lachey here helping us out, or helping me out. And today um, we are making, oh, let me just move Instagram a little bit so they can see a little more clearly. There we go. Today we're gonna be making a risotto, ham and corn risotto, mm -hmm. with a spring bean salad. Yes. Yes. So um, before we get started, just give us three facts about you. Introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, everyone. I'm Lachey McCray, and that's my real name. It rhymes. Lachey McCray. Oh, I was thinking that too. Hello. Did you that on purpose? Hickory Dickory <laughs> Doc. No, that's my name. Lachey McCray. <laughs> but um, no, I'm not really the greatest cook. You know, um, I'm kind of like a go-to quick kind of thing. I have a six-year-old. I'm like chicken nuggets, mac and cheese kind of mom. So this is really important for me if I want to like host girls' night. If I'm trying to like, you know, bag me a little something, a little man, I want to know how to, you know, make something. So my girl says she's going to hook me up. So. Yes. So we're going to get started by making our risotto. Risotto is super easy to make. Um, it's some, kind of something that sounds fancy. Do you know anything about risotto? Do you oh. like risotto? It, the picture looks good. <laughs> that's why. Well, the picture looks good, so that's why we're making it. Um, I'm just going to bring the ingredients over that we're going to need. We're going to need garlic, um, our alliums, garlic and shallot. Hmm. Shall we? <laughs> and we're also going to need our rice to begin with. Um, so, the first thing that we're going to do, I'm going to have you do, is toast the rice in the pan back here. So, just over medium, <laughs> just over medium <laughs> heat. <to> toast. <laughs> just over medium heat, you're going to toast the rice dry. I'm gonna, toasting the rice dry, guys. Yes, toasting the rice dry. And while she's doing that, I'm going to cut the shallot, which you guys have seen a million times before. I'm just going to move the... Did you get our stove to work? Our stove is like really laying right. a little bit. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So actually, I'm going to lower the heat so we don't yeah. burn the rice. We just want to <laughs> toast the rice, not burn the rice. Um, and what kind of rice we're using today is called arborio rice. There's several different kinds of rice. Did you know that? No. <laughs> I just know Carolina rice. <laughs> yeah. So arborio rice actually only comes from Italy. And if you look at it, dried. It looks a little bit different than your regular, um, like, white rice that you're used to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. This is fancy. <laughs> this is fancy, y'all. I'll show you guys. It's a little more pearl, pearlescent nice. right here, and it's yeah. smaller grain. Why it is great, and now I have rice all over my floor. Awesome. Um, why it's great for risotto is because it absorbs the water, so you end up with that creamy consistency. Yeah. And as it absorbs water, it releases starch, so that creamy consistency without any, like, cream or butter or anything. Okay. So you're going to toast it. That's going to help absorb it better. And I'm going to heat up a shallot or cut up a shallot. Okay. So, so just I pour all of that rice into that pan. All right. This is me pouring rice. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just cooking on a regular day. <laughs> and I'm going to cut up this shallot. We'll, we'll let Shay warm up to the kitchen before you give her any, uh, um, any, <laughs> any sharp tools. Don't give me any. <laughs> um, for those at home, if you're cooking long, cooking, cutting a shallot, you want to go ahead and keep that um, hair end intact in the back back there, and just go ahead and run your knife through horizontally. Oh, nice. Just like this. And it smells good, y'all. The shallot does? And it's only a shallot. <laughs> Maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> it's a little sweeter than an onion, so yeah, it should smell yes. a little bit better. And my eyes are not watering. And then just run your knife through it one more time. And you want to make sure to constantly stir that rice back there so we are not um, burning our rice. Question. Question for your guest, Shay. What is your favorite thing to cook? Oh, that's easy. Cereal. <laughs> um, preferably Cheerios, because my son likes to like a little bit of sugar in the Cheerios. 
Oh. Not, no, no, seriously, no, seriously. I would have to say mac and cheese. That's like my go-to, but I like it from scratch though. I don't like the craft mac and cheese. I like to, you know, put my, my cheese in there and my egg and my milk. So yeah. So how do you, when you, oh, you said cheese, egg, and milk? Yeah, and no. I like three different cheeses. What kind of cheeses do you use in your mac and cheese? I like the sharp, mild, and mozzarella sometimes. Oh, mozzarella. If I'm feeling a little fancy, I'll do like a little mozzarella. Okay. Mozzarella is a good melting cheese. Yeah. And you definitely need sharp when you're making mac and cheese. Yeah. For the flavor and the melting consistency. That's my go-to. Because my son just had an event at his school, and it, everyone bring a dish, but like from your from your country, and I was like, oh, mac and cheese. I don't care where country is from. As long as getting mac and cheese, that is my go-to. So I made a mac and cheese. Nice. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Did they enjoy it? They did. Oh. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna take out this rice that she's toasted only about a minute or two, okay. and there's a little few tanner ones than others, but that's okay. That's going to be flavor later. Now what we're going to do, you want to make sure you get, I wouldn't brush my knees in your hands like me. My hands are made of steel and <laughs> fire. Um, we're going to put it back on the fire. Add just like a tablespoon of the olive oil. Okay. <laughs> Where is my bench scraper? Here it is. Awesome. I like how she, she used the cap of the olive oil to measure it. I would have just drizzled it I googled that before I got here because I know she's saying this and shit. I googled that shit. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right, so now you're going to add in the shallot. And what this is, is a bench scraper. Yeah. You know, typically probably in your house you like use your knife or drag the whole. Yeah. This bench scraper makes it really easy to scoop everything up and put it in your pan. So okay. if you don't want to use oh. your knife at all. Oh, okay. Because that'll. Um, so how do I get it all on there? Put your hands. Oh, word. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to be fancy. No, no. You don't want to. At home, I want to I wanna use my hands. You don't want to scrape your knife because yeah. that'll dull your knife. Okay. And in theory, we have really expensive knives in our house, right? In, mm -hmm. in theory, right? Like I'm a Dollar Tree. <laughs> Listen, if you need it really, here. yeah, go ahead and put it in there. And I want to turn it down just a little. Um, also, I forgot to mention, guys, if you have any questions, comments, please write them in the box below for me or Shay, and we will answer them along the way. Right. Um, this is all about learning. So right. as I'm going to stir the shallot back here because we don't want to burn, again, right. theme of the evening, we don't want to burn anything. Okay. So you want to stir things. Um, and while I'm doing good. that, I want you to go ahead and grate this garlic on our microplane. Right. It's very easy. You're just going to literally do that. Okay. So go ahead and do that. I'll stir the shallot back here. A little bit lower. Yeah. And I like this. Yeah, it's so much easier oh than God. like yeah. doing just I cut mine with a knife. About that point, that's when you want to stop because your, your fingers are important. Yeah, I kind of need them. <laughs> And then to get it out, you're just going to tap it like that. Oh, nice. And then you can use the bench scraper to put it into our pot. Okay. Now, do you have any idea why we're adding in our garlic after our shallot? No. So we're adding in our garlic after our shallot because our shallot has a lot more moisture inside. So if we're going to add our garlic to a really hot pan, it's more likely to burn. Okay. And the theme of the evening is? Don't let it burn. Don't let it burn. Exactly. Like not sure. Not my sure. Exactly. See? We're not sure. We are not sure. Like sure. Um, now we don't necessarily need a lot of color on our shallots and garlic, so pretty much once they've wilted a little bit, we're going to put them, put our rice right back in. Okay. And let that continue to toast up. And then, can you scrape that out? Gotcha, girl. Then we are going to add in some wine. Now, it smells so good. risotto is a very easy four step process. You're going to toast your aromatics in your rice, add in some wine. Reduce the wine. Is that real wine? Yes, real oh, wine. Yes, girl. <laughs> you need a glass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Add in our wine, and then we're going to reduce the wine a little bit, um, and then we're going to put in broth and continue and stir and stir and stir and stir. Okay. Now, what kind of wine do we use when we are cooking? We use wine that we want to drink. Yes. Oh, it's Pinot. Oh my God, I love her. So, I'm going to let Shay do the honors oh, here. Oh, thanks, girl. <laughs> And I'm also going to stir our rice back here. How is it? Oh, this is good, guys. So You can tell she's from New York City. Because this is from Jersey, but I've been some regular schmegala. But this is really good, guys. This is really good. Um, yeah, so Pinot Grigio works really well in risotto because risotto is a very, very heavy dish. Like, typically yeah. it's finished with butter, cheese, like, all kinds of amazing things. Okay. But they're also really heavy, and which is why normally... When you go out and order risotto, you can't eat the whole thing because it's just like too heavy. Well, maybe some, it's maybe TT can. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> TT has a strong appetite. 
Um, but the wine, what we're gonna do, we're gonna add in some wine. Maybe about a fourth of a cup or so. That's why I love Kathleen. She didn't even measure that shit. <laughs> about a fourth of a cup or so. And we're gonna just stir it around and let it reduce. Now the okay. wine note in the background is going to add um, that acid note that helps balance the whole dish. Okay. Um, you really wanna make sure that you reduce the wine, which means reduce it by half. So however much you put in, reduce it by half. Because if you don't, you're gonna end up with um, like a off taste in your uh, risotto. Okay. I only know this because in culinary school, we had to make risotto and the chef was like tasting everyone's. I was like, oh, you did not reduce your wine well enough. So every time I make risotto now, I always like remember to reduce my wine. Okay. Hopefully you guys see my change at home. Question. Question. Uh, does it matter what kind of wine you use? Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, it does. You want to use wine that you're going to drink. Um, you want to use white wine. <laughs> you don't want to use red wine unless you're trying to make red risotto. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, a nice crispy acidic wine. So a Sauvignon Blanc, a Pinot Grigio. I wouldn't do a Chardonnay because those are very oaky and heavy. Right. And we're trying to balance the dish with the acidity. Um, what other kind? Sancier might be nice, depending on the brand. Um, not Prosecco, that's a waste of sparkling. Oh, yeah, no way. I would never Prosecco. <laughs> that is a waste of sparkling um, goodness. Okay. All right. So, our wine, our rice is starting to absorb a little bit of that wine. Oh, my God. Question? Yeah, question. Can you remind us what kind of rice you're using? We are using arborio rice. It is um, a short grain rice made in, grown mostly Italy. Um, in the Po Valley is where most of the arborio rice is grown. And what's great about it is that it absorbs a lot of liquid without mm -hmm. overcooking, so you don't end up with mushy rice, right. um, if you make it right. And it releases its starch as you stir, so that's where you get your creaminess from the risotto. Okay. Um, it's kind of sometimes difficult to find. You might need to go to a more specialty foods. Like, I'm pretty sure if I went to Key Foods around the corner, they wouldn't have arborio, arborio rice. Maybe Whole Foods. Whole Foods for sure. My Jersey it. listeners. <laughs> Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Um, yeah. I don't know. Do you know if Trader Joe's would have it? I Trader Joe's. I don't shop at Trader Joe's so often. Yeah. But, yeah. We got okay. someone cooking a lot of things from Whole Foods. Oh, awesome. Okay. You know what? I've like been having so much fun. We totally have forgot to season along the way. So we okay. want to make sure that we're adding some salt in. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and add. How much salt do you add? Don't. She's yeah, like, like, I would never. Just have to, like, salt, pour it in there. No problem. No, no salt. I wouldn't. You want to like add like, like a salt. couple teaspoons. Like yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> and our wine is evaporating. You can season a little more right. generously. All right. Because I'm, I'm a salt girl, but I don't know if everybody was eating. It's just me. <laughs> All matter. right, so this is what our rice looks like. We've added our shallots, our garlic, and our wine has reduced. As you can see, there's no wine, there's no liquid left in the pan here. Right. Um, that's Oh, sorry, guys, over here. Um, so you want to make sure it's really, really reduced so that flavor is infused, but you don't have that alcohol taste. Right. Now, we're basically done with this. Um, we just have to add in chicken broth. Now, the way we're going to add in chicken broth is a little at a time because, like I said, um, how we make it nice and creamy is we keep stirring it. Okay. Now, recipes might tell you um, to heat chicken broth on the stove and add it in warm, but that just dirties another pan. I understand the concept is, like, you know, something cold is going to take longer to heat up or something at room temperature, but do you like to do dishes? No. Yeah, I don't either. So we're just going to add it in straight from the box. Um, right. It really won't ruin your risotto. Right. Um, you just have to, like, yeah, it's not, you don't have to use two different pans and heat it up and add yeah. it in. Yeah. The only thing that you want to do is keep remembering to, to keep and stirring. Risotto, That's, yeah. That's risotto is an active dish. See, I'm the kind of person, like, like go do laundry, <laughs> take care of my kid, put them to sleep. Yeah, no, risotto's not yeah, really. you can't do that with risotto. Not really one of those things you can do. Yes, question. Yes, we have a comment from Chase Dad who says Chase going to drink all the wine. <laughs> At the end. We want to make it to the end. Hopefully. <laughs> all right. Um, so while Shay is doing that, I'm going to uh, shuck our corn. So we have ears of corn. So the other amazing thing about risotto yeah. is that you can make it with any flavor base. Okay. You could use, you can make a seafood risotto and use seafood stock. Mm. You can make vegetarian use vegetarian stock. Okay. Um, you could just use vegetables. It's really like an empty canvas. So in this one in particular, because it's springtime. I like that. Um, we're going to add corn and ham. So we just need, while the risotto is prepping, um, or while the risotto is cooking, we're going to 
shuck our ears of corn and cut the kernels off the cob. Do you trust me? <laughs> Do you want an example before I start? Maybe, maybe give me a little example. Okay. So it's, this is honestly not the easiest thing to do because no matter how you try to do this, the corn kernels are going to fly yeah. everywhere. Um, I sometimes, when I'm feeling, I don't know, like I want to dirty another dish, I'll do it in a bowl. It kind of like prevents most of them from nice. flying around. Yeah. Um, but it's still, you'll still end up with them. I'll let you do that. I I'll do this on a result. I actually do this on a regular because my son has two missing front teeth and he can't chew like a, a you know a whole corn so i have to like cut it off for him because he doesn't have any teeth so i'm kind of good at it but i just didn't want to <laughs> i didn't want to show how i do it because i'm like here go ahead go ahead and eat <laughs> like, hurry up. um yeah so yeah it's not it's not so difficult but the bowl makes it easier for cleanup yeah but then again it's something you have to wash at the end so right your choice make your life easier in the beginning or later really doesn't matter to me Again, I'm back here just stirring the risotto while she is cutting the corn. Got you, girl. Got you covered. So if you were doing this by yourself, I would recommend cutting all of your ingredients first. Ahead of time, yes, yeah, for sure. And then just coming to the stove and finishing. Because like I said, when you're making risotto, you don't want to walk back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right. And you can really cook your risotto over any type of heat. Um, the higher the heat, the more you're going to have to stir, 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 because it's going to start sticking to the bottom of the pan. And as it's cooking, we're going to add in more liquid as the liquid evaporates and absorbs into the pipes. All right, so Shane, I'm so glad that you are on the show today. At the Thank end you. of, um, beginning of spring, sort of, in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really spring yet. No, it's spring. <laughs> we had shorts on when I was driving here. I'm like, should I take this all like this shorts on out here? New York is like a whole different world. I'm from Jersey, guys. So you grew up in Jersey? Well, actually, I was born and raised in White Plains, New York, but I hate to say it because it's not considered a borough. And, like, you New York people be like, oh, Westchester, like, don't even mention it. But well, I was I'm born in New York person right. now. Yeah, <laughs> she's not. She's from California. Oh, okay, so that's, that's I can say it comfortably. Yes, that's like can. New Yorkers. Yes, and, like, when you say Westchester, they're like, oh, Westchester. Who what a Westchester place. But I was born in Westchester, and um, now I live in Jersey. I've been there since I was 10, so... I'm a Jersey girl. You think you'll stay there forever? I mean, I'm like a suburban, like, there's three stoplights to your house. There's no traffic. Like, on the way here, I was telling Chris, I'm like, it says 17 minutes away, but that really means 25. Because <laughs> it's just, like, all the traffic, and it's just different. The hustle and bustle. Yeah, that's what I different. love about it. But since you're yeah. in suburbia, doesn't that mean you cook more? I feel like that's, like, my... Yeah, uh, no, you do. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like the one dish girl. You know, I'm like the one dish. So you, I'm good with that one dish. Talk about your mac and cheese. Yeah. What else is, are you like go-to thing? Um, I would say chicken. Anything that involves chicken, I'm I'm gonna make it. You know, like baked chicken, fried chicken, like the whole chicken? chicken, like wings, thighs. You know, stuff like that. But my son now he's six, so he asks a lot of questions. So now his whole big thing was. Was this alive? <laughs> so now like, I gotta find something different to make. I was like, yeah, this was a live lunch. Just eat it. This is what I make. So yeah. So we have our we have our corn. I want to keep working while we're chatting. Yeah. Um, and then we're also gonna add in some ham. Like I said, you can keep this completely vegetarian. However, okay. you want to make your risotto. Um, you just use veg vegetable stock and just add right. vegetables and skip the ham okay and all we're gonna do with our ham is cut it into like bite-sized dice or bite-sized pieces okay. things that would not look awkward if you put it in your mouth if you're on a date <laughs> oh my god <laughs> for real for real like this is really important guys because I mean like if you're anyone like me who loves to eat you're like jamming everything in your mouth and you don't want to look stupid yeah you don't want anything hanging out of your mouth for <laughs> I'm going to show you a little bit better way how to cut in a second. Once I, oh, this is not I it. Know that I oh this my hand. god, this is not it, guys. <laughs> oh my god. Viewers, this, do viewers not follow do this not example. Watch me. <laughs> Listen, we should have like a whole disclaimer and a warning. This is like what not, not this how is not to be. Oh my god, look, look, no, now look, now look. No, look. Stop it. I'm gonna do it. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's getting the job done. I don't want to, listen, I'm not a kitchen shamer. As long as you, also, I need to keep stirring this. Wow. Wow. I am not a kitchen wow. shamer. <laughs> no shame. I just, I no just, shame. I just want you guys to do it right. Like,
Like it's so much more efficient. These guys, yeah, Listen, don't, don't I don't change lives with these uh, techniques and tips. Word. <laughs> For real. All right, again, you guys, risotto's cooking back here. I'm constantly stirring, constantly, because that's how it's gonna become nice and creamy. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome to Real Life Cooking. We're here with Shetley, me, and we have Shay McCray, Shay McCray Shay here. McCray. Um, and we are making a ham and corn risotto and a spring pea salad. Um, and we're just chatting about, you know, the hardships of cooking. Yeah. And, oh, let me show you this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, before I can find the picture the next All right, so, no, like, no, Sorry, girl. all right. I know. So, I actually see a lot of people do this. You're cutting, like, with your finger, like this. Oh. Like, you feel like you have, like, control over the knife like that. Right. But you actually want to keep your thumb here and your whole wrist like that. Oh. You see, you see, that's different, right? It's the flick of the wrist. The flick L of the wrist. It's literally. So, your thumb is literally at the base of your knife here. And yeah. You're, yeah. And then, so you'll have a lot more control. So, you can, like, rock your knife back and down. And also, cutting something so big, I would cut it into, like, an easier manageable piece. And cut those dices like that first. And it cuts so different. And then, even if like we have all these pieces here, I might okay. even just separate that into three, so it's just a little easier for me to cut you through. You know what? There you go. This I'll let like, you continue. This is exactly how. Oh wait. Okay. Wait a minute. You said right here, like this. Yep. Exactly. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna show you guys our risotto. We added in all that liquid, and it's actually already evaporated. Um, but the rice is not cooked. I can tell by the way it looks. It's not opaque yet. Um, if you can't tell by how it looks, you just can take a little bite and see if it's like super al dente. There you guys go. Al dente. Al dente, yes. Oh, okay, I'm learning so much stuff. Al dente. Um, so at this point, obviously we need more liquid. So I'm going to add more liquid in and continue to stir, stir, stir. Will it be wine? <laughs> no, no more wine. But would you like some more wine in your glass while you continue? Yeah. Now that you are handling the knife pro properly. Yeah, I know. Now it's kind of good. combination. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna add in some more chicken stock back here. Um, we are actually sadly done with the wine with the risotto, oh, or for so the risotto. Sad. I'm also gonna add in just a little bit more salt. You wanna season along the way so you're building layers of flavor rather than adding all your salt in at the end, okay. um, which will make it just salty. Yeah. Instead of, yeah. And I ain't no salty bitch. <laughs> <laughs> with a glass of wine, no question. No question. Would you consider this a date night meal? You know, I'm out of the dating scene, so I could I couldn't really uh I'll let, I'll let Shay answer that one. But you know what? The way that it smells, it smells really good, guys. Like, I don't know. But the garlic though, on the other hand, I don't know. Like you don't you don't gotta, you know, have the breath smelling right. So but the, you may embarrass yourself, but it smells amazing. But the garlic is cooked in. It's right. not like raw garlic. Okay. Raw garlic is gonna be way more aggressive. My, my and it's also them. yeah, and it's also yeah. only one clove of garlic. Okay. So like if we we're using we we're making like chicken with forty cloves, I would definitely not recommend that for a date. Yeah. Um or like any sort of thing with like raw garlic in it. But yeah, this, yeah. This is like gonna be nice and cooked in and we're doing all this stirring and the flavor should be nicely combined. So yeah, I would say so. I would do it. So to that special guy out there, if you're waiting for me, I'm gonna make you risotto yeah. ham and preferably corn. Yeah, that's a big step up because I know a lot yeah. of date night meals is like tacos, and I love tacos. Oh, tacos. Yeah, but that's kind. of... <laughs> you love my tacos. I'm just. I mean, kidding. guys, I <laughs> love tacos, but guys out there, if a yeah. girl made you tacos or a girl made you risotto, right? How tacos? <laughs> well, Chris has spoken for tacos. all men out there. I just feel like if you're trying to impress tacos. someone, tacos, tacos are not. I love tacos. Too. Yeah. Tacos too. I'm listening. What you got? No, but you're right. Like talk of like regular schmegala. If you're trying to impress yeah, somebody, if you're trying to impress someone and show them you have some class. Oh, <laughs> what? What you picking up as I drink my little pino? My word, class. Not. I don't know. If you have some class. <laughs> if, if you have some class. <laughs> if you have, if you were show. born with them, right? <laughs> if you had any kind of class, I would you. I love a taco, but I just feel like a risotto is elevated. That's yeah, that's the word. Elevated. I like that. If you want, yes. If you want, if you want to level up, right? Yes. If you want to level up, yes, exactly. Risotto. You know what I'm saying? But well, I mean, she's no, over here getting dating advice, and she's about to get married. Like she's still in the that, scene. But that's <laughs> why though, she's about to get married. She knew what she was doing. She you know why? I need to have like a you know cooking one on one with TT and Kathleen. <laughs> All right, so our risotto is still cooking. Yes. Um, I'm still stirring over here, and I'm gonna put Shay to more work on our salad over here. I'm ready. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is wash our lettuce. Okay. 
We are going to be using butterhead lettuce today. Oh, wow. I've never heard of that. This is this lettuce. Look butterhead. Like this. Nice. So what we want to do while I continue to stir okay. is, so I normally take off like, good to see, look it. You know what to do in the kitchen. She knew, what, she knew it needed to be stirred, so she just started stirring. Hello. Um, we're just going to take off the leaves. And by the way, this lettuce is not so dirty, but it's always dirty to wash your lettuce. You don't know what's hiding in there. That's true. And That's we're just going to dip it in the water. And then I'm going to get you some paper towels and you can lay it out on the paper towels. And we're going to keep it in like these big leaves. I think it'll look pretty for presentation. Okay. <clears throat> Where is what I'm, oh, I want to get you some towels. But wait, okay, I didn't watch you peel it. I don't want to like mess this up, guys. It's going so good. You can't mess up uh, lettuce. Okay. So here, I have mine. That well. All right. <laughs> Just peel it off. But wait, we're starting from where? There's leaves. Oh. Oh, let's see. It's a little more difficult. There we go. You All right, right. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's okay if the leaf like tears a little. It's okay. not really that. Like you're still gonna eat lettuce. I don't want to mess broken. this up. I'm trying to get a man. I don't want to mess this up. This is like the, the best Ooh. part, right? This is it right here. All right. Oh my so we're just See, gonna... guys, oh, if you're anything like me, look. The end, the middle gets a little more difficult. You can tell I do arts and crafts and stuff. Like, this is the part that I, I love if it's, like, artsy. But I'm trying to catch me a man. You know she do artsy stuff? Mm -hmm. All right, you got to, like, make sure you so, feel it. Like do that. you often cook for men? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> what I know, what I, what I know that you do is... <laughs> I, I bag them, and then once they're in there, I'm like, listen, just so you know, like, I don't cook. <laughs> That's what I normally do. But I mean, I'll cook if I have to, but... But, oh, so but no. Too. I have a question. Um, one second. We'll get your question. So our risotto has absorbed all that liquid again, and I've also seasoned it along the way. Um, it's still... You can see the grains are, like, a little bit bigger now, so they're getting more cooked. It's not quite done, but it's almost there. Nice. So note, if you wanted to make this ahead of time, this would be a great time to pull this off from the stove, put it in the fridge, so then when you want to finish it, when it's like when it's time to eat, you can finish it when it then. So you can just cool this down and then finish it. So you don't have to waste all that time like, yeah. slaving over the stove. You can like do this, go get ready, okay, and then come back and finish it. Now that, that wouldn't like change the whole consistency of it, right? No. Okay. If you, see, if you finish this whole dish and then when got ready, it would be overcooked. Okay. But um, if you pulled it off now, mm -hmm. then it would be like perfect if you finished it at the end. Okay. Question, TT. Oh, someone has another question. They missed it. What grain of rice is that again? Arborio rice is what we are using. Um, it's a short grain rice from Italy. It's a little difficult to find, but you can find it for sure at Whole Foods. Um, like your probably higher end markets. Another question? Yes, my question is, what is the appropriate number date to cook for a man? Mm. Or partner. I like that. Potential partner. Well, well I guess that has to be cook? the appropriate date. For you. When did you cook for Chris? Right. Well, Chris and I are a little bit different because I met him and then I left on a ship for five months. <laughs> but we saw each other like three months into it. Okay. And I, my first meal I ever made for him was actually pretty terrible because it was eggs and it was at my aunt's house. And I was like, you know, I had indulged the night before. Right. My best friend's wedding. So I was like oh, a little yeah. not all the way there. Right. And like I was in a, a, a foreign kitchen like trying to figure things out. That's important. And, and in my defense, mm -hmm. he also like took an 80 long, 80 hour shower. So like by the time they came, the eggs were cold. So that wasn't my fault. It might have been a little bit better if the eggs were not cold. But how long it takes him to get ready, that's not my fault. Um, but I think that kind of begs the question of like when is it appropriate or when do you feel comfortable yeah. inviting someone into your home, right? Right. Like when you're dating them. So oh, that's a really good what question. What do you think about that? Oh, wow. I have to say, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of big on like a vibe. If you feel a vibe with someone and you feel like they're not a murderer or a killer, <laughs> then you can invite them. High standards them. here. <laughs> Don't ever kill anyone? Alright, cool. Come on over. I think you should come. No, no murder on your belt? You're safe. So I don't know. The first dish that I made was spaghetti. And I'm like really big on spaghetti because I like to put a lot of meats in there. So it was like sausage and ground beef and pepperoni and stuff like that. Thank God he wasn't a Muslim, so he, he, ate, he ate the meat. Law meat. So, but um, yeah, that was about a month in. I'm I don't know. But I, I guess you have to go off of a vibe, though. Yeah, for sure. I think a it's vibe. always a, a vibe. 
Yeah. Um, also, for the longest time when I lived in New York, before pre Chris, um, BC, before Chris, <laughs> <laughs> um, I lived with a lot of roommates, so like no one really ever came over my house. So yeah. I'm like, let's just go out. I don't How about want to be girls' feeling. night? Like, this is a perfect dish for girls' night, too, though, I feel. This is, yeah. Like, me and my girls would dog this, especially like the wine, too. The wine and added. Risotto is actually really good with wine. Like, the yeah. same exact wine you put in your risotto, if you mm -hmm. drink it with your risotto. Drink, yeah, drink your wine with eating your risotto. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's nice and smooth. All right, yeah. so I'm going to have you, in the midst of our salad making, I'm going to have you taste that. My favorite part. It's super hot. Wow, my It's not going to taste, <laughs> it's not going to taste like much at the moment. It's just rice and chicken broth and salt. And shallots. Oh my God, it's so hot. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> oh my God. Your next dish. You know what's really good? Like for real, for real. Really? Good, girl. All yeah. right. We're gonna turn that off and we're gonna finish this at the end because as you can, it still has like a little bite to it, right? Yeah. Or does it feel raw to you? No, like a little bite to it, but I don't like it like mushy, mushy though. Right. Like it's too soft. So um, because we're, it's gonna sit there for like five minutes while we finish up the salad. Yeah. Um, it's gonna continue to cook. Okay. So by the time we finish it and heat up and put the butter and cheese inside, it'll be like perfect consistency. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so the next thing for our salad that we're gonna have are radishes. Oh my god. Do you like radishes? Can I tell you guys something? <laughs> I've only heard about radishes from Peter Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> from the cartoon on Nick Jr. I've never actually seen a radish in person. I thought it was only for Peter Rabbit. Okay. I'm being honest. Really? Yeah. You never had a radish? No. All right. Oh well, radishes are really dirty. So okay. that's why I dip them in this. Look at how dirty that water turns. Is that like a salt water or just? It's just regular um, okay. water. Right. Um, yeah, I just dip them in. I don't think I can show you without pouring. Actually, yeah, you guys can't see it. Kind of yeah. looks like swamp water now. It's like really. Because they grow on the ground, just like right. potatoes. Right, right. Like the green tops are. But, and these green tops are actually edible too. Um, they taste really good sauteed or thrown oh. into salads as well. You okay. want like a different dimension. Right. Wait, let's. I'll taste some of that. Some Peter it's Rabbit. very yeah. It tastes like Peter Rabbit. It tastes very mm -hmm. green. Oh, but, it's good. <laughs> but yeah, if you saute it with some garlic and onion, or right. even threw it into a salad, it's just a different dimension. Even raw, yeah, like a little yeah. bit of salt and some dressing. So don't throw away the Balsamic. green tops That's if really you good. have them. Okay. Um, for our radishes, you can prepare them however you want. But this tool. Any idea what this is called? That's how I'm gonna watch you. I'm, I'm holding it like this. I'm like, how to <laughs> This mandolin is gonna make our radishes look like super pretty and professional. Okay. Um, the only thing we want to do before we use it is cut off the little little rat tail. I call it. That doesn't okay. sound very appealing, but that's what I call it. <laughs> um, just so we have a flat surface to work with. And then this is like super easy. This mandolin um costs like twelve bucks at a store or on Amazon. And um, all you really do, it has three different settings, and each setting makes things thinner. So depending on how thin you want things, you can put it. This blade oh, is, this is super. So dope. Guys, look at this. A mandolin. <laughs> look at this, guys. This blade so is easy. It's super sharp, so it's another yeah. thing you want to be careful, just like the raspberry you were using earlier. Okay. Once you get to a certain point where you're like, I might cut off my finger, just stop using it. All right. And you can either snack on it or like, you know, yeah, really? snack on it. Yeah. So can you put this in your salad raw? Yeah, we're gonna put it in the salad broth. All right, nice. Um, okay. So radishes vary on flavor profiles. Like some are super spicy, mm -hmm. and some are like more mild. Okay, mm -hmm. this one. This one's like pretty mild, but some mild. are like spicy, like pepper. I'm not gonna do that shit. Sorry, <laughs> I'll embarrass myself. Remember that one girl who had like the on um, the hot pepper? Did oh, this that? is spicy now. It's, it's getting that? a spicier okay. note now. See, that's I'm not gonna embarrass myself. Start you have the wine stuff. right there. Come on. Try it out. Come so on. I see I switched the setting and it became these really super pretty thin nice. ones. Nice. I like that. I like that. I like the thin ones. The thin. Yeah. Ones. And so it makes, it cuts it thinner than you can ever um, do with your knife. So that's what I like about a mandolin. And it just like kind of elevates. Okay. It's not bad. Yeah, it gets a little more spicy. I'm like, as I'm like <laughs> eating it, I'm like, it's not that bad at all. That's not bad. It's actually good. Um, but it adds a nice crunch, a nice flavor profile. Okay. Um, spring is actually, oops. Spring is actually the best time. Do you want to try this, or are you scared? Um, I think I can do it. All right, here, use the bigger one, okay. and stop when you don't feel comfortable. Okay. Um, 
spring is actually a really good time to get radishes because especially if you go to farmers markets and things they have like beautiful rad radishes like mm -hmm. yellow orange purple radishes like really really and they have different flavor pro profiles as well mm -hmm. so it's a really good time to add them into your salads um, how do you know which one has which flavor you honestly can't tell oh crap i would stop now I'm, yeah. I, I don't want you to cut yourself off <laughs> <Right. laughs> listen and i'm definitely not gonna get a man if i cut my <laughs> finger off um, <laughs> a freaking radish. um you really can't tell like okay. by how they look it's just like you have it's kind of luck of the draw from oh, what wow. radishes you get yeah okay so we'll move these over here what else is in oh our spring peas oh i love these so these are sugar snap peas yeah um you can leave them whole mm -hmm. sometimes if they're like old you have to string them it's like edamames right Isn't that right. am i saying it right edamame yeah okay edamame edamame Edamame. 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 See, edamame. I'm like, I'm like, are these edamames? <laughs> um, sometimes you have okay. to string uh, these sugar snap peas because they have like a weird fibrous like yeah. line there. But these actually, but the way you can tell is just taste one. I, I tasted one earlier. Yeah, that's how I eat mine. With soy sauce though. And if they don't have like a weird one. fibrous thing inside of them, then you don't need to take to bother stringing them. But what we are going to do with these for our salad I can eat these like straight out with soy sauce. They're so good. Is we're just going to take some, like maybe three at a time, mm -hmm. and we're gonna cut them on an angle. So by cutting things on an angle, you're gonna make like really pretty knife cuts. But all you, it sounds complicated. Literally, instead of chopping straight, you're just gonna turn your knife at a diagonal, okay. and you're gonna run your knife through just like that. So you have these nice little pieces, just like that. Nice. I'm gonna get our plate and put our lettuces on there for now. Okay. So this is gonna be a plated salad. Um, so I'm just gonna lay our lettuces around. I wanna make sure our lettuces are nice and dry because otherwise they won't, the dressing won't cling to it. So I'm just gonna make sure I rub those off on the paper towel. If you have a salad spinner, it's actually a pretty good investment. I used to like think salad spinners were a waste of life and space in your kitchen. But it is a pretty good investment because you can wash all your lettuce and when your lettuce is bone dry, say you're saving this for later, it saves a lot longer. Like wet lettuce is gonna like mildew a lot faster. Yeah. Um, dry lettuce will like keep this. Dry lettuce, if you were to spin it and put it in a Ziploc bag with paper towel, would last for like two weeks. And that's my issue too because I always clean my lettuce ahead of time for like lunch for work. And I like to clean it before I put it in my <clears throat> Tupperware. And whenever I get to work, all the water spills out of the Tupperware and into my lunch bag. <laughs> and I get mad every time. So I think a lettuce spinner is really good. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, and since you live in Jersey, you probably have the space for it. Yeah. I refuse to buy one for this small New York apartment. Um, is it that big? It's pretty big. It's like the size of a pot. Um, like maybe, because I guess a smaller one wouldn't really make sense because the lettuce wouldn't fit inside of it. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna arrange our lettuce on this plate. We'll save that for later. Put that in front of us. And I'm going to move this over here. What else do we need to do? So you're chopping that, and then I'm gonna arrange some of our radishes. It looks kind of pretty if you just span them out. Can you guys, <coughs> sorry guys. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm just gonna fan some of these radishes over our lettuces here. So this is a nice, beautiful, spring salad this would be great for Easter actually yeah. all the pretty colors especially if you got those pretty radishes I was talking about right oh we might need some more radishes over here I'm running out that is really pretty and again if you notice I'm sure you have I don't use measurements <laughs> yeah <laughs> I can I will, never, I... I will never be able to tell you like use six radishes because I feel like recipes should be fluid, right? So right. Like depending if you're if you're just cooking for you and your son, like mm -hmm. you'd only need like maybe half of that. Although would your son eat this? <laughs> well, no, I mean I would make this for me and my girls, me and my little guy friend, you know, like my little boo, yeah. something like That's that. Enough of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just want to use your eyes when you're cooking, and like right. something like this, it's not so serious. Like if you have six radishes, four radishes, it's really like how much fills the plate, how much you think people are gonna want to eat. Right. How what, the appetite of people that are gonna be eating. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think that actually might be enough. So I'm gonna spread these around, and then if you want to sprinkle those peas, sugar snap peas around, like that guy on social media. Oh, this <laughs> salt bay. It's <laughs> salt bay. <laughs> We're gonna put that there. Nice. Gonna move this out that of the way. That looks really pretty. Yeah, it's like 
so easy. And sometimes like just plating a salad instead of yeah. just tossing it in a bowl right. just makes it look like so much prettier. Or and that you took your time. I mean, yeah. the whole bag salad, that, that's cute. You know what I'm saying? That's cute. But this is really nice. This is sexy. For you and your girls, you know, the girls come over, like it's sexy. Or you know, little guy friend, whatever like that. You know, this is nice. I like You can this. like bring out pretty. your little plated salad, yeah. like one and two. It's like a city dish. Like from us Jersey little <laughs> suburban girls. This is like a city. Yeah, I'm playing your Jersey dish. <laughs> Not suburban. I'll be like a little white bar. This is really nice, guys. Like a city dish. Nice and classy. All right. So the only last thing that we need to do. Yep, see? See, you know how to, know. You know how to cook with your eyes. Because right? you look that, that looks like an open eye. Right? So yeah. Have, yeah, exactly. And we'll just save this. We'll just save this for later. Over here. For some soy sauce. For some soy sauce. <laughs> All right. So we're going to make a quick dressing really quick. Okay. Um, The first thing that we're going to do is, where's my raspberry? Is zest our lemon. So zest, oh. um, you're basically doing the same thing with the garlic. Really? Just like that. And you see that in there is the zest smell. It. It's going to kind of smell like garlic, but it also smells Ooh, lemony. Yeah, lemony. Yeah, yeah. It has a lot of aroma and flavor inside of it. And what is this called again? I'm sorry. This is a rasp grater. This rasp is my grater. favorite tool of the kitchen. Okay. I don't like this. So yeah, if you could do like half of that lemon. And you don't okay. want to like rub, rub, rub because you don't want that white pith because yeah. that's bitter. So okay. you just want the literally so like why are we um, zesting this you said zest right zest. zest why are we zesting this um what cause it's going to add a nice different dimension to our vinaigrette rather than just adding lemon juice it's a whole different uh, flavor than lemon juice it's like more floral kathleen yeah you're gonna follow her follow <laughs> her and she has like the whole methodology the zesting Where is my the methane. yeah i mean cooking doesn't really have to be complicated you just have to think um, you just need really simple techniques and yeah. applying them to flavors that you like. So right. even if you don't like, I said, like the flavors we're using in the risotto today, if you don't like those flavors, just switch them out for something else. Mm -hmm. The only thing you really need is the wine, some sort of stock, and like a garlic or a shallot or something like that. You could even use onion. Okay. Um, that's probably good. So you can just tap that into the bowl. It's enough? Yep. Okay. And we're going to also do another piece of garlic for our... I thought I... Now, when you do the garlic, this is so important for me because I always have a hard time getting off all the little, what do you call it, like the, the, the layers oh, of the, the garlic. The paper that I just Yeah, I yeah. hate that. So, so, I just... I miss it. <laughs> this is a huge thing for me. When I'm peeling off that paper, it gets stuck to my fingernails all the time. So, so what did you do? Um, basically, I'll take another one. Yeah, please do. I'll do another one. This is so important. Let's move so everyone can see as well. Yeah. There we go. Um, so basically, the easiest way to peel garlic from my my way of doing it is um, also we want to keep our knife clean. Right. All right. You just literally cut off the top and the bottom, wow. and then normally like it's most so of it comes off. off. Yeah. But that piece won't be that hard to peel off. So you guys, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> is that life changing right now? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so if you can um, rasgrate that into the okay into the bowl and I'm going to rub our lemon all around I'm going to move this for now I'm going to press our lemon down to get the most juice out of it that we possibly can when we go to juice it mm. there we go this is like my favorite tool oh my god you don't understand this tool is like this is like life right and you now. can use it for cheese you can use it for zest you can use it for uh, garlic my favorite application for this tool is garlic because garlic mincing garlic is like so annoying yes it is <laughs> so annoying i just <laughs> cut it in small chops like um i got that from this movie um goodfellas and when he was in jail he would cut it real small little <laughs> fine pieces and that's exactly how i'll put on but this tool is so much easier so that is exactly the way to do it yeah. all right so lemons, I'm sure you're probably typically used to cutting your lemon right in half to get the most juice out of it, yeah. or to get your juice out of it. But the best way is to cut it like off center, oh, just like that, so you end up with three pieces. And then like watch how much more juice that we're gonna get out of there. Oh, I never cut it like that. And le this works really well for limes too. We did get a seed in there, but I'll grab that out. Dang, even for tea, I never cut my lemons like that, ever. You really get way well, more, that, way yeah. more juice, and it's way easier. Like, right, it is. The, the way you're squeezing it, it just comes right out. And then I cut that middle piece in half. Okay. And I just squeeze it. Right. Just like that. Oops, we got two seeds in there. That's all right. 
Um, if you want to avoid not getting any seeds in there, you can like put a strainer over that, and then. But then you have to wash the strainer again. I'm lazy, laziness. <laughs> where I'd rather, I'd rather struggle later. Though. Yeah. Um. So we're just gonna. If you can grab those little seeds out. Okay. We're gonna season our uh, lemon juice, salt. basically. Oh, yes, girl. Love salt. salt. Salt and lemon. Yep. Salt and pepper. Nice. And then, so there's two different ways you can do this now. Um, if you want a emulsified vinaigrette, you can add a bit of mustard now. Mm -hmm. um, that's just gonna help combine the two friends, to two things that are not friends, the uh, acid and the oil together in a more like concise manner. Or you can just keep it super simple and add in just some olive oil, which that's what we're going to do. Okay. This is a place where you'd want to use that super high quality olive oil that I know you have at home. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> of the shop, right? <laughs> there's on sale. Um, yeah, this is this not is important. the most yeah. super high quality. But this, because we're going to taste this like so brightly, right. you want to use like a really good olive oil. This is the dressing for the salad. Exactly. Yeah, for that I would get the expensive olive oil and hide it from everybody else. <laughs> Yeah. So if you just want to drizzle some in and I'll just It'll stir it. it, you can just drizzle it. Yeah. Trust uh -huh. yourself. Do you trust me? Yeah. Okay. And so this is again, you don't have to measure and it's never going to combine because this acid and this oil are never ever going to combine unless you put in the mustard, then it might combine. Okay. Um, that was good. That yeah. Was so we're going to taste it. So right. again, when you're measuring things um, with a vinaigrette, if you like things more acidic, like more yeah. like, to it, you're going to put less oil. If you want like less acidity, then you're gonna put more oil. Okay. Um, so let's taste it. Grab a spoon, you can dip it in there. See what you think. Okay, it's a little, a little <laughs> acidity. A little, a little extra a little, for you. A little acidity going on. All right, yep. so we're gonna add in some more. Remember, this is gonna be on lettuce. Okay. So it is gonna be a little diluted. Yeah. All right. That's probably good. Yeah. Actually, you know, the I best way to taste, I'll give you one of these leaves again. The best oh. way to taste your vinaigrettes is against the piece of lettuce that you're going That's to be true. eating it with. <laughs> and that is you so know what good. You know good? You start dancing? Yes, for sure. <laughs> And that's so, that is something that's really you can totally do, right? That is like, so good. <laughs> oh my God, on a regular, on a regular day. Oh, that, that is, is something you so can totally good. do. Totally good. All right. I like that. Final thing we're going to do. Actually, we have two more things to do before we get to eat. Um, we're going to grate some cheese. What kind of cheese is this? This is an Irish cheddar. Um, oh, okay. You can use any traditional risotto. You're going to use Parmesan cheese. Okay. Um, but I don't know. This actually, I forgot to mention, I got this recipe from countryliving.com. I did not make up this recipe, <laughs> but I'm not really following the recipe anyway. But the idea came from countryliving.com. If anyone thinks I'm bootlegging someone's recipe. <laughs> All recipes are basically bootlegged anyway. Um, but they use cheddar and I thought it would go really well because of the ham, right? Like right. ham and cheddar goes really well together. Yeah. Um, all right, so if you want to just grate it, I actually added, or I put our cheddar in the freezer for a second. Okay, it's Cause it, <laughs> you gotta put your back into it. <laughs> because if you've ever tried to grate like warm cheese, it's yeah. very, it's harder than actually Is it? when it's really cold. Yeah. That's good to know. I'm also going to turn our risotto back on. I had taken it off the heat back here and add in a little more chicken stock. Why did you use this grating tool opposed to the other sides? Um, so it's fancy. Generally, on these like box graters, yeah. that's the only side I use on a box grater. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Because okay. I don't, this. This side is like to make sliced cheese. Let me show my, my regular schmegler people, because <laughs> she fancy. This is the side we're using, just so you guys know, to get it right. And then it looks like, you know, like the, the storeboard. If you're like me, the storeboard, you know, shop right. And we're not <laughs> using store-bought because they yeah, no, she, she's not. Well, no, no, I, there's a reason. There's a reason behind Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Because the store-bought, although it saves you time, a lot of time it doesn't have the true flavor of right. actual regular cheese because it's coated with a lot of preservatives. Like, because it takes a lot more effort to keep this longer for better right. than a big block of cheese. So gotcha. they coat it with like random things just to make it last longer. Right. So the, that actually off, take, off puts the flavor a little bit. Oh. Um, and I mean, it's very minuscule, like, if you're, no, if you're choosing between, like, not cooking because you don't want to grate cheese or buying cheese in the grocery store that's already right. shredded, please buy the cheese in the grocery store that's already <laughs> shredded. Like, don't not cook because I said you can't use a grocery store cheese. 
listen. But it's also good if you want to get that flavor. If you're like a person who likes the flavor yes, and everything, for sure. yeah, you got to go for this one. For sure. So I'm just stirring our risotto back here, heating it back up, and I'm going to add in our ham and corn uh, back here into our pot. Our corn that was so expertly done by Shay <laughs> and our ham as well. Do you have a question? I have a question. Yeah. question. Does it matter if you grate it horizontally or vertically? Oh, that's a good question. Because what am I doing? <laughs> oh, honestly, I'm honestly, when it's it comes to grating cheese, no, not at all. It's just what feels better in your hand. You can actually okay. probably solve. We don't need all of that. Okay. Yet. All right. Ah, I just it came out nice. This. I like that. All right, I'm gonna Ooh, move this. Nice, nice, nice. Back over here to finish it off. Okay. So we added our corn and our ham. And um, so it looks like this now. Yeah. Nice. And we're gonna add in, I would say, like that much of the cheese right there. Okay. And just sprinkle it in. It's just so sprinkle good. it in. And as you can see, also, it's pretty creamy as it is, right? Yeah. Like it's like falling off. So yeah, go ahead and add it in. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of butter. We're gonna keep it healthy because all that ham and cheese is super healthy, right? <laughs> So we're only going to add in a little bit of butter. <laughs> just, just, it's really not that much. <laughs> it's like a couple tablespoons. Okay. Um, and then if you can just mix that up for me. If you want to yeah. switch with me, because I'm going to chop up some of our garnishes. Yes, I'm just going to don't tell nobody. All right. Yeah. I'll scoot on over. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just working. <laughs> just working over working here. Working in the kitchen. Um, where is my bed scraper? I want to move this out of the way. All right. So... We have some mint for our salad, which I'm gonna um, oh my God, chiffonade. Oh my God. And this is gonna make our spring salad like even more springy with that like bright freshness. Yeah. I just want to clean this a little bit. Oh, and it smells so good. So we're gonna add in. Now mint is an herb that I don't mind having at the house after. Yeah. Because then you can just like make mint tea. Mm -hmm. um, what else can you do? Make mint tea? Oh, you know, we're so <laughs> I, I like to make mint tea. That's why I said I love mint. <laughs> Um, and how I'm going to chop this for a salad, I'm going to basically take all our leaves, stack them on top of each other, roll it up just like this, and then just ship a nod, which means little ribbon, run my knife right through it just like that. Nice. <laughs> so I'll have a little pile of mint over here. And then if you were cooking along, I asked you to get chives. For some reason, the grocery store around my house does not have chives lately. No. So a good substitute is green onion because this, again, this dish is very rich. Mm -hmm. So we need to cut that with some sort of like brightness, which this green onion is going to do. Right. Also, I want you to taste that one last time and tell me if you can. Oh, that is no <laughs> problem. <laughs> you is think you need anything good. while I cut up this onion. Really good. Do you need salt? Me, I like a little salt, All right. but it's perfect. I assumed it needed more salt, especially because we forgot to season at the very beginning with our yes. shallots and our garlic. But it's really good. All right, let's add a little bit more salt, and then we'll get ready to plate. Nice. A little bit, a lot of it, more salt. Uh huh. I didn't taste it, but I know it. I, I, I just it. knew it needed salt. And then let me taste it. Putting it in. <laughs> Hi, this is me yeah. cooking <laughs> on a television show. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure it's in there nice. Oh, I moved your. Oh, and you, you smell the butter too. Oh, the butter smells really good in there too. All right, we're gonna top that. Do you want to do a full? Or is this your vision here? Like half I mean, moon no, like, style? Like New York people like have a, have a, like you know like like nice and classy. If it was me, I'm like. There's no, no, no. Let's not be shy. All right, don't be shy. We're okay. gonna um, go ahead and put a good amount. Oh, see, I would never. Be like, I would have never did that. The risotto is like a great meal, also to serve like family style. You All can right. put it in like a giant bowl and pass it around. All right, cool. All right. I was a little nervous. So we're gonna put that. I'm trying to be classy. 
And then we're gonna sprinkle our green onions just on top, nice. just like that. Oh my god. Just like that. And then our salad. Got cut it. our risotto. I'm gonna bring that over. And we are gonna just sprinkle our mint on top of our salad. Mm. And then we are going to spoon our dressing over. Ooh, I don't know if you use it. Let's raise the thought just in case. Yeah. We're going to spoon our dressing yes. right over oh my God. our salad, just like this. Mm -hmm. And then also we want to um, season our salad with some pepper. This will also add like some nice dimension to it, too. Yeah. All right. So, you ready to eat? <laughs> Am I ready to eat? <laughs> yes. um, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight on Real Life Cooking. Thank you, Lachey, for coming thank through for all the way from me. Jersey. Yes. How do you feel confidence level leaving this house after? I feel really confident about this, guys. I feel like a lot of heart and my hands is working today, guys. I'm feeling good about this. But no, everything came out really good. It was fast and easy. I feel like if I can do this, y'all can do this. Yeah, we made a ham and corn risotto um, with white cheddar. And we made a nice spring salad that's like super bright and acidic, which pairs perfectly with our nice hearty risotto. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching. Um, see you next time on Real Life Cooking with Chef Lee. Bye, guys.